morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, details on a local crash involving a motorcycle that in left a woman dead overnight. Plus, Kyle Rittenhouse takes a stand in his murder trial, saying he didn't intend to kill anyone. Outside with Lie Camp, still very muggy out there. Some clouds kind of hanging over downtown San Antonio. We're going to talk to Mike in just a moment, so hang on. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, November 11th. More importantly, it is Veterans Day, and we salute you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for all of our veterans and all of your service. We really do appreciate you. And Mike, are we going to have good weather yep. in honor of Veterans Day? Yes, indeed. As a matter of fact, front's moving through right now. So uh, it scared up a couple little sprinkly showers in the Hill Country earlier. That's pretty much about it. I mean, if there's one little sprinkle out there, that's going to be uh, about it. And uh, really can't see it on this picture, but you look at temperatures, 67 out there at the airport. 56 Kerrville, 59 in comfort. And then you look at the, the dew point temperatures, measure moisture in the atmosphere. Still very humid when you step outside, but there's that drier air that's coming on in here. And the wind is already starting to shift around out of the north, primarily uh, 13 mile per hour winds here in town. And it's going to get breezier throughout the rest of the afternoon. So throughout the course of the next couple of hours, we'll continue to see temperatures drop down. The humidity is going to be dropping down. Winds will be sticking around and clouds will be clearing out by about, uh, say, toward the latter part of the, the morning commute. Mold is on the low side from yesterday's count. Temperatures, we're, like I said, 67 here in town right now. Dropped down to 60. Probably need a jacket in parts of the hill country, like I said, since you're already in the uh, mid-50s. And northeasterly wind is going to pick up about 10, 20 miles per hour. A little bit gusty at times. 75 for a high temperature, low humidity. And this is the start then of great-looking fall weather through the next uh, few days, including the weekend and jackets in the mornings. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark. Mike, we will see you in a bit. Thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman who was riding her motorcycle last night was killed. It happened around 10 p.m. in the 12,000 block of O'Connor near Wurstbach Parkway on the northeast side. SAPD says the woman had swerved to miss a vehicle that cut her off but moved right in front of a truck. A pickup then hit the motorcycle, causing her to crash. Police say she tried to get up and was staggering and then walked right in front of another vehicle that hit her. Officers say she was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver of the vehicle that hit her drove away from the scene. No word yet on any potential arrests. Now to that dramatic turn at the Kyle Rittenhouse murder trial yesterday and a major question now lingering over the case. The defense has requested a mistrial. ABC's Andrew Dimber has the details. Day eight of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial gets underway this morning after intense drama in court Wednesday. That's basic law. It's been basic law in this country for 40 years, 50 years. And Rittenhouse breaking down on the stand. The 18 year old is charged with shooting three people, killing two of them, Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber. During protests in Kenosha, Wisconsin last year, Rittenhouse says he opened fire in self-defense. He says Rosenbaum threatened him before the shooting. She scream, if I catch any of you alone, I'm going to kill you. Rittenhouse then choked up. Mr. Rosenbaum was now running from my right side um, and I was cornered from in front of me with Mr. Zeminski and there were <laughs> there were three people right there. The problem with a breakdown like that is if you're inclined to believe him, you feel sorry for him. And if you're inclined not to believe him, you think he's faking it. Prosecutors attempted to dismantle Rittenhouse's argument that he had traveled to Kenosha to protect businesses from looting. Why do you need the gun when you go out there? Um, I, I need the gun because if I had to protect myself because somebody attacked me. Why would you think anybody would do that? I don't know. Then the judge scolding the lead prosecutor for attempting to discuss a video of Rittenhouse from days before the shooting. Pardon me? That was before the Don't defense Don't get mine. brazen with me. Uh, uh, you knew very well, you know very well that an attorney can't go into these types of areas when the judge has already ruled. The defense is now seeking a mistrial with prejudice. If the judge approves that request, Rittenhouse cannot be retried for the crimes. 
Rittenhouse has pleaded not guilty to homicide and attempted homicide charges. We expect to hear from three more witnesses. Jury deliberations, meanwhile, are likely to begin next week. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. The U.S. and China have announced a surprise pledge to strengthen their cooperation in addressing the climate crisis. The pledge comes ahead of a virtual meeting between the U.S. and Chinese president. Specific topics have not been announced yet, but there's also an expectation the conversation will include China's military aggression against Taiwan, specifically recent testing of a hypersonic missile and cyber attacks. The space race could also be on the table for discussion. The armorer for the movie Russ claims she is a victim of sabotage regarding last month's incident while Alec Baldwin shot and killed the film cinematographer. Attorney Jason Bowles is representing Hannah Gutierrez-Reed and says she is being framed. Gutierrez-Reed was the armorer as well as key props assistant on the film. She handed the weapon discharged by Baldwin to assistant director David Halls, according to her attorneys. Bowles says the scene of the fatal shooting may have been tampered with before authorities responded. He's calling on the FBI and other authorities to fully investigate the matter. Tesla CEO Elon Musk sold $1.1 billion worth of Tesla stock this week. On Monday, he exercised more than 2 million stock options, then sold nearly a million shares. He conducted a Twitter poll over the weekend on whether he should sell 10% of his Tesla stock. 60% of his followers said yes. This is the first time Musk has sold a block of Tesla shares since 2016. According to a regulatory filing, Musk will use profits from this week's sales to pay taxes on stock options. Bloomberg now puts Musk's net worth at nearly $300 billion, making him, bar none, the richest person on Earth. Wow. On Earth, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not his other departments, something like out in space. Yeah. 436, about 67 degrees. We'll still have the latest on a consumer report that shows an excessive amount of heavy metals that can be found in spices many people cook with. Interesting. Finally, a big, big win for our Spurs last night. We have highlights of their victory over the Kings. Go Spurs, go. Mike says the cool front is already blowing in in our area. How much will we cool down? So let us know when we come back. Welcome back. Time for a look at morning sports. Spurs hosting the Kings last night. You could tell the silver and black were tired of losing. Kelda Johnson with the first shot of the game from the wing, and it's a three, and it's good. A sign of things to come. San Antonio's highest scoring opening quarter of the season, leading Sacramento 34-20. Then San Antonio had seven players in double figures. DeJounte Murray contributed 26 points and six assists, and the Spurs never trailed the whole game. Rolling past Sacramento, 136-117. to 117. Drew Eubanks added 18. Doug McDermott scored 17. It was four for six shooting on three-pointers. And listen to this, best part. San Antonio hit a season-high 18 threes and snapped a three-game skid. Spurs had not won at home since the season-opening victory October 20th against Orlando. We know that we have a tendency of when we're playing really, really good, we kind of slack off and let the, the gas pedal down. And um, I think... Um, even though they were scoring, we were still doing what we were supposed to do. We are still disciplined, knocking out shots um, and playing the best that we can, and um, we didn't let up. That's awesome. Up next, Spurs host the Mavericks tomorrow. Tip-off 7.30 here at home at the AT&T Center. National Signing Day for all sports other than football yesterday. Lots of high school student-athletes signed on the dotted line, announcing which colleges or universities they'll attend and continue playing their sport. Over at Wagner High School, Austin Nunez headed to Arizona State to play basketball. Down the street, Judson softball star Keely Williams signed her letter of intent to play for A&M. And over at O'Connor last night, as many of five athletes advancing, including Leanne Good, who will be suiting up for the Texas Longhorns in softball. I pick Coach Charlie to go play for him because, I mean, I like playing fast. And I think he, he gives me the freedom that I'll be able to play with. And I think just the culture there is just good. Just mainly like the culture and the people, um, just how they how they just showed their like their face to me compared to all the other schools. It was just it was something different and it was very special. This is my dream school. I've been dreaming of going here since I was five years old. Been to every fall summer camp I could have possibly been to. It's dreams into reality. That's what I can put it as. I've never been more excited. And congratulations to all the local student athletes and best of luck. Oh, such a big deal. Congrats, guys. All right, 442 and 67 degrees. So the head why some of the most common spices you use to cook with may contain too much lead and other metals.
And next, a teenager and her mother charged with rigging a homecoming queen election last year are speaking for the first time about the incident. Courts found heavy metals like lead, cadmium, even arsenic in popular spices that can be found in just about any kitchen. Wow, here's 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with what the testing found and how to minimize your risk. Herbs and spices are what give your cooking flavor and kick. I cook a lot of beans and rice, and then, of course, there's always some type of meat. So if I didn't use herbs and spices to cook, I really feel like there wouldn't be any flavor. It wouldn't taste good. But according to a new Consumer Reports investigation, flavor is not the only thing those pinches and dashes may add to your food. We tested 126 products and found that roughly a third had combined levels of arsenic, lead, and cadmium high enough to raise health concerns. In 31 products, levels of lead were so high they exceeded the maximum amount anyone should have in a day, according to CR's experts. Most troublesome, oregano and thyme. All of those products tested had levels that their experts found concerning. The American Spice Trade Association says it's almost impossible to rid spices of all heavy metals because of the unavoidable presence in the environments where they're grown. So when you are shopping for herbs and spices, what should you do? The good news is we found plenty of spices below our threshold of concern, such as black pepper, curry powder, coriander, saffron, white pepper, and garlic powder. Another option is to grow and dry your own. It's easy to do even if you don't have a green thumb or outdoor garden. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, it seems like for the last week or so, we kind of forgot what fall felt like around here, especially in the mornings. Yeah, it's been incredibly humid. Yesterday I went on a walk thinking I could wear a long sleeve. That was a bad, bad idea. idea. <laughs> You will need long sleeves, though. Uh, well, actually, later on this morning, some folks right now need them in the uh, in the hill country. And then the next few mornings and Saturday afternoon, too. So, yeah, that's because it's going to be a little cooler on Saturday and then the evening is going to cool off very quickly. So uh, looking just jumping ahead now tomorrow night for football. Yeah, make sure you take a jacket. And then, like I said, on uh, Saturday as well, beautiful view of the moon and it's in its first quarter stage right now. I love that mankind's obsession with the moon. It's romantic, though. Why not? So anyway, thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. We do have some clouds still hanging around here looking off to the northwest, but things will continue to clear on out. And here's a look at radar right now. And yeah, that's it. Well off to the north and east where there is some rain being generated by that front moving on through here. That's just some clutter around the radar site, but you can also see right there that kind of darker green line as the front works its way on through. So a couple of showers as expected were generated by this. Not a whole heck of a lot. And also in the water vapor imagery, you can see how we do have that northwesterly flow now in behind as the front moved on through. Temperatures we're at 67, but then drop down about 10 degrees. So that cooler air is going to move on in here. I think we dropped down to 60 this morning and then start to rebound from there. Also, the drier air is going to be coming on in here and the wind is now shifting around out of the north to northwest and about uh, 5, 10, 15 miles per hour. It's going to be a little bit on the breezy side throughout the day. Here's the uh, satellite and radar picture and really doesn't show that well some of the low clouds, but also if you kind of squint, you can see that line right about there and along the uh, where the rain is, where the front moves on through. And this is the tail end of a much, much bigger, or the, the main brunt of that, well up there into the Prairie Provinces of Canada, that huge low sweeping that front on through. But always seems the case that we're just kind of on the tail end of it and we don't really get anything from it. So we do have some great fall weather in behind. Unfortunately, no rain from that. And as far as the humidity, which has dropped down, and it's going to be staying... OK, not bad throughout the rest of today and tomorrow. And then we get another reinforcing shot of dry air tomorrow night into Saturday. And that's why temp and also a little bit cooler air, too. So that's why temperatures are going to be the coolest as far as highs on highs on Saturday. And then the humidity is going to start to come back in here as we go into the first part of next week. So it will be a, a little milder, it looks like, going into next week. Nice little taste of fall. Won't last forever, though. 70 today at noon, mostly sunny, breezy conditions, and plenty of sunshine later on today. Again, just a good-looking fall day. 75 degrees, just about normal as far as temperatures are concerned. Then we're going to drop on the cool side of things the next few mornings. And uh, 48 tomorrow, 45 Saturday morning, we've got that next little reinforcing shot of not cold, cold air, but coolish air, dry air, sort of keeps the humidity on the low side. Good-looking weekend, plenty of sunshine. Like it. I'm excited. Yep.
Okay, good. Thank you very much, Mike. And again, veterans, we salute you. Today is your day, as is just about every day of the year. Right now, we're at 451, 67 degrees. Well, up next, a preview of The Shrinks Next Door, starring Paul Rudd, who has just given a big sexy honor by People Magazine. Yeah, Mike just missed out again this oh, year. Darn, Mike. He's a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> <laughs> we can change that part. Uh, here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, 592, Fireball 5. Your daily four numbers, 8928, Fireball 4. Catch 5, 720, 24, 27, 29. Texas Lotto, 683. 36, 37, 44, 50. And I did win three bucks on the lotto, so hey. It makes hey, up for not being the sexiest There man. you go. <laughs> Powerball, 19, 25, 43, 46, 48. Powerball, 14. Power play, 2. People Magazine honoring actor Paul Rudd, plus first look at the mayor of Kingstown. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Paul Rudd, just named Sexiest Man Alive by People Magazine. I do believe you have just had what we head shrinkers call a breakthrough. And next, you'll see him as the title character in The Shrink Next Door, in which he takes over the life of a patient played by Will Ferrell. It's based on a true story podcast. Star Casey Wilson knew it very well. I listened to it right when it came out and was fascinated and horrified by what had happened. And I, I really love kind of that genre of podcast and the true crime element and Thankfully, as we said, no one was murdered, so it, it's just such an interesting story. Catherine Hahn also stars The Shrink Next Door is out Friday on Apple TV+. Plus. It's nice to remind them, they're the prisoners, not us. Debuting Sunday, Jeremy Renner stars in The Mayor of Kingstown, which takes a look at corruption and crime in a city where prisons are the major industry. Hugh Dillon co-created the show alongside Yellowstone creator Taylor Sheridan. Dillon telling me there were nine prisons where he grew up. We were interested in how crime and punishment uh, affected people in the town, like where I was from. My mom was a teacher. My friend's parents were uh, guards and convicts. The mayor of Kingstown debuts on Paramount Plus Sunday. This time of my life, I feel much more comfortable being myself. Out today for free, watch Tom Petty create his 1994 smash hit album, Wildflowers. The documentary Tom Petty, Somewhere You Feel Free, is streaming now on YouTube. And happy birthday today to Leonardo DiCaprio, the Oscar-winning actor turning 47, while actress Demi Moore is 59. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. 456, 67 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, prices are surging on everything from groceries to gas, chipping away at Americans buying power. How President Biden hopes to fix the problem. Plus, Apple's launching a new subscription service for small businesses. We have details coming up in your morning tech bites. Taking a look outside with Trans Guide, everything smoothing pretty Sailing pretty smooth. Well, you know, it's it's nice out smooth there. Smooth sailing? Smooth sailing. There you go. But Stephen Cavazos will do a much better job in just a bit explaining the roads. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. One of our top local stories this morning. Firefighters respond to an explosion at an apartment on the southwest side. We have details on what happened coming up. Americans all over the country are feeling the effects of inflation from the gas pump to the grocery store. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, when economists feel the country will bounce back. 67 degrees at almost 5 a.m. There it is. Mike says a cool front is blowing in as we speak. He'll explain in just a bit. And good morning, everybody. It is Veterans Day 2021, otherwise known as Thursday, November 11th. Thank you so much for all of our veterans and all of your service. We salute you and thanks for being with us this morning. Let's talk to Mike. Uh, he said a little cool front moving through pretty much as we speak, right? Mike? Yeah, yeah, kind of a kind of a two phase thing. Uh, we've had the wind shift around and what's interesting is actually temperature has now gone up one degree out there at the airport. So got a lot of humidity uh, and the wind has kind of settled for the time being. It had been shifting around out of the uh, north to northwest. That will be the case throughout the morning. It's already come through the hill country. Your temperatures are down in the 50s right now and then we're going to make it up to 75. 
25 later on today about the normal average high temperature and it will be on the breezy side low humidity a good looking fall day and the timing again is perfect going into the weekend kind of jumping ahead of myself here the aquifer went up one tenth of a foot yesterday and the allergens just low amounts of mold hanging around out there all right here's what it looks like on radar right now and or excuse me with the winds beg your pardon nothing is showing up on radar i mean this thing as expected uh, may have squeezed out a couple of sprinkles here or there and that's pretty much about it. The overall flow, like I said, is starting to shift around out of the northwest, but then it's, like I said, kind of a multi-stage thing. So the wind shifts around, then we'll get the dry air and the cooler air coming on in here. So as the front moves on through, our temperatures will be dropping down in the next couple of hours and then bounce back to the mid 70s. Breezy, less humid, great, great weather. And with this kind of weather, though, don't forget, just like going into last weekend, once that sun gets lower in the sky, it's going to cool off very quickly. So uh, think about tonight, tomorrow night, going to football games and then on Saturday as well. Chili starts in the mornings, beautiful afternoon tomorrow, and that will last in through the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Getting ready to hit the roads. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Anything going on yet? Good morning, Mike. Well, Sarah would say it's smoothing smoothly right now. There are 410 at San Pedro. We do have traffic, light traffic, really. A lot of these shots at Transguide do show it's pretty empty out there. So if you're heading out the door in the next few moments, you may find yourself feeling a little lonely out on the roadways, but that's not necessarily a bad thing when it comes to morning traffic. Let's take a look right now at this map. Now it looks like a crash just popped up. They didn't see this before this segment, so we'll take a look at that a little bit later on in this newscast and give you all the updates. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of a build up there on 35, but keep in mind we did see this yesterday also with some construction going on out there. Uh, crews did have a little bit of a delay when they were picking up some of the material, so hopefully we won't see that again today when people start getting out on the roadways. But the good news is if you're traveling into San Antonio, you shouldn't find much of a delay this hour. Right now, 25 minutes on 35 coming in from New Braunfels, and if you are traveling in from 281 and Bolverde, we see 28 minutes, so we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown, but nothing too major. Coming in from I-10 and Bernie, it's just 25 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. One last look around town, 37 at Houston. It's smoothing smoothly right now. Pretty quiet on the roadways. We'll check in on that crash coming up a little later on in this newscast. Mark. Thank you, Steve. I knew this morning a man recovering from burns after an explosion while he was cooking in his kitchen overnight. It happened in the 1700 block of West Mayfield Boulevard near Quintana Road on the southwest side. Firefighters say while the man was cooking, he lit a cigarette, and that's when the explosion happened. It was so severe it blew out an exterior wall of his apartment. The man was taken to a local hospital. We have no word on his condition. The confessions to the carjackings continue for the Alamo Quarry shooting suspect. A new affidavit revealing 18-year-old Julio Cesar Rivera and another man stole a truck at gunpoint near Goliad and I-37. This happened back on October 9th. Rivera told police he also took a car from a woman at North Star Mall and took two other vehicles from a quick trip gas station on Rigsby. That crime spree happened from October 9th to October 19th. Today, Metro Health continuing its mass vaccination clinic for adults and kids at the Alamo Dome. The dome opens today and tomorrow from noon to 8. You don't need an appointment. Right now, 323,000 local children are eligible for the COVID vaccine. Families who get the shot will get gift cards to HEB. So any parent who uh, brings their child 5 to 11 or even 12 and older, uh, once their child is fully vaccinated, returns to get their second Pfizer vaccine, they will get a $100 HEB gift card just in time for the holidays as long as supplies last. If you're still considering whether to get your child vaccinated, Metro Health telling parents to, to talk to a pediatrician for more information. It's an issue affecting Americans all over the country. Prices rising uh, in almost every sector from gas to the grocery store. New numbers on inflation suggest the economy is seeing the biggest increase in prices in more than 30 years. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington with the latest on the economy. It's happening all over the country. Gas prices are outrageous. Americans alarmed at rising prices. Everything from the pump. I was on the New Jersey Turnpike and it was 414. So I decided, just for premium, so I decided to drive to Delaware, right? And in Delaware, I think it was uh, like 10 cents more. To the grocery store. 
Most of the prices for meat and vegetables have gone up. Inflation threatening to undercut America's economic recovery. The Labor Department releasing new numbers showing that consumer prices have surged 6.2% over the last year, the largest 12-month increase since 1990. Prices are increasing everywhere. Energy, food, even new cars are among the largest contributors. Economists say it's the direct result of the pandemic coupled with supply chain issues. Former Clinton Treasury Secretary Larry Summers predicted this latest inflation surge and has been warning the White House for months. He tells CNN that the economy has not lost control and expects prices to subside once Americans fully return to the workforce, but warns. So I think we're speeding down the road at a really rapid rate. It's kind of a downhill uh, road and it's not going to be so easy. Uh, to put the brakes on. President Biden at the Port of Baltimore touting his bipartisan infrastructure package Wednesday, also acknowledging the rising prices, assuring Americans it'll be addressed. We're tracking these issues and trying to figure out how to tackle them head on. The economist Larry Summers is calling on the Federal Reserve to take stronger action and also says the Biden administration should consider removing some tariffs affecting prices. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. In honor of Veterans Day, many companies around San Antonio are offering discounts to veterans and active duty military. We've compiled a list of various businesses in the area, including some online retailers that are offering special deals. For example, at Buffalo Wild Wings, veterans get 10 free boneless wings and fries. At IHOP, veterans and active duty military will receive free red, white and blue pancakes from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And the San Antonio Zoo members of the military, both past and current, get free admission to the zoo all month long and can bring up to four family members at 50% off standard admission. These are just a few of the many deals and discounts available. The full list is available right now on KSAT.com. Several city, county, and state government offices will be closed today in observance of Veterans Day. That includes most financial institutions, the U.S. Postal Service, the Central Library in all branches, and San Antonio Municipal Court. All closed. There are still several things open, including the 311 call center and the COVID hotline. For a full list of closures and openings for your Veterans Day, go to ksat.com. Right now it's 507, about 67 degrees. Well, still ahead, Apple is launching a subscription service for small businesses. We'll tell you how it works. And next, how San Antonio and other communities are taking new steps to fight back against gun violence. 67 degrees at 508 this morning. Things are beginning to cool down, according to Mike. How cool will they get with this cold front that's coming in? He'll explain when we come back. We want to make a quick correction. The Alamo Dome vaccine drive through clinics are shut down today for Veterans Day, but should reopen tomorrow. Friday. Texas communities are looking for different ways to fight gun violence by using people who once walked in their shoes. Operation Peacemaker Fellowship got its start 11 years ago in California and is mentoring program for young adults at risk. San Antonio has a similar program, but it's not a fellowship. It has violence mediators and the program treats violence like a disease. Sam Vaughn, a former agent turned program manager, says it took time to gain the community's trust, but it's working. Scores of communities across this country that are benefiting because we were able to create something that the scientists and the politicians and the, and the intellects can point to and say, oh, this is beneficial to this community. Although everybody knows that it's beneficial, like you don't need data to show that loving a community is going to help it. Other cities have created their own programs using the Richmond and San Antonio models as examples. But you can read more about this program on KSAT.com. 512, still about 67 degrees. Still ahead, why YouTube is making dislike counts private for everyone. And we'll tell you more about Instagram's new Take a Break feature. After I came home from Iraq, I could still hear the booms. Makes it hard to be a good mom. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. I'm Naomi Mathis, Air Force veteran. DAV helps veterans get the benefits they've earned. Thanks to DAV, I was able to begin to heal. With the right support, more veterans can reach victories great and small. My victory is being able to be here for my children. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Pain hits fast. So get relief fast. Only Tylenol Rapid Release Gels have laser drilled holes. They release medicine fast for fast pain relief. And now, get relief without a pill with Tylenol Dissolve Packs. Relief without the water. I have to praise you. 
Every moment together is a gift. La vie est belle. Lancôme. At Macy's, the fragrance destination. Apple is offering a new subscription service for small businesses. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Apple's new service for businesses with up to 500 employees. The subscription service helps companies with functions ranging from device setup to employee onboarding. It will also include full-time Apple support and iCloud storage at a cost of about $3 a month. And YouTube has started to keep dislikes private. You can still dislike a video, but you won't be able to see how many others feel the same way. Video creators will still see the count. YouTube says the move is meant to promote respectful interactions. And finally, Instagram is testing a new feature to remind you to stop scrolling. It's called Take a Break. Users who opt in will get an alert after spending a certain amount of time on the app after 10, 20, or even 30 minutes. It could be rolled out to all users as early as next month. We could all use a little break. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 516. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, everyone. Well, those construction crews out there off 35 at FM 42 have not taken a break. Uh, it's been working through here throughout the night in this corridor. You can see it's very dark out there. Traffic is moving pretty smoothly at this hour. But if you were with us yesterday, you do know that that was a big problem as the morning went on. Uh, and we're starting to see that same buildup right here in those northbound lanes of 35 right at FM 1103. Uh, traffic right now moving at 27 miles per hour, but it's likely we can expect this stretch of orange to continue to orange that is to continue to build throughout the morning. We'll continue to keep a close eye on that, but we do have some good news. That crash that we told you about a little bit earlier here off Loop 410 northbound at I-35. It does look like that has cleared from the system. Uh, I checked the transguide cameras. There was some first responders out there, but again, it looks like they have just cleared up. So uh, it should be good to go there, but we do have a stall right there off Loop 410 southbound at I-35. Overall, the morning has been shaping up to look pretty decent so far. Uh, taking one last look here at this shot of transguide. Just pack your patience this morning. Hopefully Hopefully this won't be a mess as the morning does pick up, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Mike and I were just talking about Christmas lights. Already? Yeah, he says this is the weekend well, to do it. <laughs> really? But not, not turning them on. Oh. But just getting them up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, getting them ready. The yeah. entrance to my subdivision um, got decorated yesterday, oh. so the lights were on this morning. Okay. That's mm -hmm. nice. And I'm seeing more and more. The Pearl has some lights on. Yeah, and some on the river walk mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wouldn't, wouldn't turn, you know, no wreaths or garland or anything yeah, yet, but I just want to get them ready. just, you know, take, because Saturday is going to be such a beautiful day, it'd be oh. a perfect opportunity for it, so, because I kind of got the, when I was thinking about it last weekend, it was like, mm, that look, so. From, from your wife. Yes. yes. <laughs> so what did, so what's your game plan? Ask the question again and see if I get the same look. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> picture from yesterday. Yesterday morning we had some of those clouds still hanging around here, and the sun was trying to squeak through. And then, of course, it did come through and had a lot of sunshine yesterday afternoon. Yvonne, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Uh, the clouds still hanging around here this morning, and there still are a couple little speckles of rain well off to the north and east. All this is kind of working its way off to the east. This is right along the front, sort of the leading edge of everything that's going on and then maybe even a couple little uh, perhaps a sprinkle down there in southern uh, Medina County. It's still 68 degrees here in town. 61 burning stage and then mid 50s mid and lower 50s out in portions of the hill country. So it's kind of even though the, the wind at least last half hour had shifted around to the north and northwest. It's kind of a one two sort of punch, if you will. So we'll get the wind shifting around. Then we get the drier air coming on in here. Then we get the cooler air coming in. So notice how dew points drop down a good 15 degrees or more between San Antonio and Kerrville. Bandera at 56, 40 is way out there around Lost Maples. And the wind is going to continue to shift around and pick up. Yesterday, we did get up to 81 degrees. That was the first time we hit 80s so far this month. And about uh, eight degrees or so above the, the normal high temperature. Today, after the front moves on through here, knock it down uh, about the mid 70s here in town, which is still going to be maybe it, we'll call it in the ballpark of a normal average temperature. So uh, mid 70s on average around the area. All right, here's what the satellite picture looks like. And again, you can see how there is 
you know, there's the front moving on through here. This one is indicating maybe a couple little sprinkles. If there is a sprinkle, don't be surprised, but it's not really going to amount to anything. And of course, follow this all the way up to the north. And yeah, that's a big, big storm system moving through the uh, northern tier and the prairie provinces of Canada. But for us, just not a whole heck of a lot of moisture to work with. We do have another front which is going to come through here uh, late tomorrow night, early, early Saturday, sort of a reinforcing shot of the cooler, drier air. But it won't have any moisture really to work with. So here's the long range computer model. And you can see there's really nothing showing up at all going in through even the first part of next week. There's another actual front that's going to try and move through on Monday. Nothing's going to get squeezed out of that. And it really looks like at least some of the long range computer models. It won't be until about this time next week when we have a somewhat decent chance for some rain around here and a few more clouds and it's going to get milder next week. So enjoy this uh, small little stretch of fall weather we have going through the weekend. 70 today at noon, mostly sunny, breezy and temperatures will drop down this morning and then come back up to 75 Again, breezy conditions, low humidity. Open up the windows today, shut them tonight because it's going to get down in the 40s tomorrow morning and 75 in the afternoon down to 45. Notice we get those 30 degree swings in temperatures approximately. Very dry air, only 68 on Saturday, so it's going to be coolish. Good day to put the Christmas lights up outside. <laughs> you know, turn them on, um, and then we're going to see temperatures back into the mid 70s by Sunday. So uh, safe to say you've been warned um, by by the uh, mm -hmm. head of household. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good luck with that. Okay, mm -hmm. keep us posted. Wish you the best, you. Mike. You're going to be great. Thank you. All right, stay on the ladder. 522, about 67 degrees. Let's go ahead in your morning spotlight for Veterans Day. Details on a new documentary about the search for World War II soldiers. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, five, nine, two, fireball five. Your daily four numbers, eight, nine, two, eight, fireball four. Cash five, seven, 20, 24, 27, 29. Texas lotto, six, eight, 36, 37, 44, 50. Powerball, 1925, 43, 46, 48. Powerball 14, power play two. Our Veterans Day Entertainment Roundup features two films with military ties about a Navy officer who ran for president and the search for Americans who never returned from war. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. It's a leap going from being a mayor to being a presidential candidate. But I realized I had something to offer that was just different. The documentary Mayor Pete, debuting Friday on Amazon Prime, goes inside the surprising presidential campaign of Pete Buttigieg. An interesting psychological portrait of what it's like to be an, an, an American politician. You know, how do you be yourself and also answer to when the I news media, to the voters, that was, um, and remain that true? I think that's a fascinating game. dance Without that you see Pete go through in this film. And I think it's a portrait, a historical portrait of a gay couple that we haven't seen in politics before. An MIA family never puts away the loss of somebody who hasn't been able to return home. It leaves a void in your your mind and heart. Project Recover searches the ocean depths for thousands of Americans still missing in action from World War II. The documentary To What Remains, premiering at AFI Fest on Veterans Day and releasing widely December 10th, chronicles the efforts of these scientists, historians, and veterans working to give MIA families closure. You never forget your comrades. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 526, about 67 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, an update on how many children are now being vaccinated against COVID-19 and why measles might be making a comeback. Less pressure mounting for the White House to take action on rising gas prices. And are you ready for some curly fry vodka? We'll tell you about Arby's unique alcoholic creation that's coming up. And how much do you really know about lung cancer? What are chances of getting diagnosed with it? We have more coming up later on GMSA at 6. Making headlines this morning, hundreds of thousands of children now being vaccinated against COVID. Why some doctors are concerned about other viruses resurging. It happened in an instant. That's what neighbors say about an explosion that rocked this southwest side apartment building and sent a man to the hospital. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. 67 degrees at 530 this morning. Mike says things are cooling down as we speak as a cold front 
flows in. He'll explain how cool things will get the next coming days. And happy Veterans Day to you and all our veterans. It's Thursday, November 11th. Yes, we honor all our veterans and appreciate everything they have done for our country. Let's get an update on that cool front. Here's Mike with more. It is moving through right now. It's kind of a two stage uh, sort of thing, and it's not really coming through with a whole lot of fanfare. We do have a lot of clouds as of right now. Temperature actually went up a little bit out ahead of the front. 68 degrees and the humidity went up. There's not much of a breeze as of right now, but that is going to be changing rather shortly. And yeah, like we were talking about the past couple of days, this was not going to do a heck of a lot, even as far as rain was concerned. I mean, there may be that's some clutter on the radar site over there at uh, out to the west of us, but as you can see, uh, maybe a few sprinkles there, some off to the east. That's pretty much about it. Overall, the, the flow is starting to shift around out of the north. We did have northerly winds just about an hour ago, and then they sort of settled down somewhat, but they will pick back up out of the uh, north later on this morning. Mold is on the low side at 240 from yesterday's count. 70 at noon, 75 for a high temperature today. So, And notice how it's 65 at 10 o'clock. I think we drop down in the next couple of hours and then start to rebound. And what clouds we have right now are going to be clearing out. It's going to be a gorgeous day, low humidity, kind of on the breezy side. And beautiful fall weather is going to be uh, sticking around for a few days. Will it last all the way through the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Kavad what's going on? Good morning, Mike. Well, I want to make a quick correction here. We did say that this crash off Loop 410 near I-35 cleared out, but our friends at Transcot actually just moved the camera around to get us this particular shot there. So that crash is still active. You can see that traffic is moving through that area, but not very fast. So give those first responders plenty of room to get this scene cleared up. Not the only issue we've spotted so far, but just to bring you to the map, that crash detected there off Loop 410 northbound at I-35. Let's take a jump down here because we have another one that's causing some issues. This one has been detected on the TxDOT website, I-10 eastbound at Loop 410, where we're seeing a buildup here along the northbound lanes of 410. So we'll continue to watch that pretty closely. We had hoped this Thursday morning would start off a little slow, but we do have another crash that popped up there off 410 near Cherry Ridge and a stall vehicle here on 35, along with that stretch of orange where we do have those construction crews still out there. So it does look like Thursday morning traffic off to a busy start. The silver lining here is if you're traveling into the San Antonio area from any of our neighboring communities, well, it's going to be great across the board right now. I-10 from Seguin, 30 minutes at this hour, 22 minutes coming in from 87 and Lavernia, and we have 29 minutes coming in from Flotusville. Taking one last look at this shot at Transguide, we'll continue to keep our eyes on this crash here off Loop 410 at Loop 13 and give you all the updates as you need to know. Mark, Stephanie, or Mark, Sarah, pardon me. Thank you, Stephen. Well, gas and an open flame appear to be the combination that caused an explosion in a southwest side apartment. It left one man with burns and to the hospital and the neighbors without a place to stay. Katrina Weber is live where it happened in the 1700 block of West Mayfield. That's not too far from Southwest military. Katrina, has there been, been any word on exactly how this happened? Well, according to what we've been told by firefighters, uh, it appears that the man who was in that apartment had just lit a cigarette while he was cooking, and all of a sudden there was an explosion. Based on what we've also heard from neighbors, it seems that there was some sort of a, a gas leak or perhaps gas escaping at the time when he lit the cigarette. Let me show you, uh, CPS Energy is, is still here. They've been here all night. There are crews that are working back behind the building. Also behind the building, there's a huge hole uh, where there used to be a wall that is wide open and we hope to bring you some video of that a little bit later on this morning but for now I can show you what things look like late last night this happened after 11 o'clock last night again firefighters were called here there was some fire uh, when they got here they were able to quickly put that out they say that the man who was in the apartment again told him he was cooking he lit a cigarette saw a blue flame and then there was an explosion well, I did have a chance to talk to some of the neighbors. One woman says she was in her apartment next door. She smelled a strong smell of gas just before this happened. She went from one room of her house to the other, and then seconds later, she was knocked across the room by that explosion. She says she came outside of her house, noticed her neighbor out there with burns. That man who lived in the apartment where this explosion happened was rushed to a hospital. Uh, we have not heard an update on his condition, but firefighters told us that he did, in fact, suffer some burns. So again, CPS Energy crews out here this morning trying to address whatever that issue was 
uh, presumably involving gas. And uh, that, is, that is the situation here. They are here for now. We don't know how long they'll be here. But in the meantime, those neighbors are outside their homes. They say they were told it's not safe for them to stay here. And so they're here waiting for the American Red Cross to show up and give them some kind of uh, assistance. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. This morning, vaccination for kids 5 to 11 are ramping up. However, kids' COVID cases are going up too. CNN's Britt Conway has a story. All done. All done with his first COVID-19 vaccine. And he's not the only one. The White House estimates nearly a million kids 5 to 11 have gotten their first dose. With about 700,000 pharmacy appointments on the books, 114 children's hospitals and doctor's offices are offering vaccinations too. And there are mobile clinics in some places, along with school clinics. But getting more kids vaccinated is often a battle against hesitancy and sometimes equity. A recent poll shows parents with lower incomes are less likely to get their kids in that 5 to 11 age group vaccinated. With concerns about getting time off work or finding a way to get to a vaccination site, along with educational disparities. Experts say more education generally comes with more acceptance of science. COVID-19 vaccines aren't the only vaccine doctors are worried about, though. The CDC says 22 million babies worldwide missed their vaccinations last year during the pandemic, worsening the global threat of measles. All the while, kids' cases of COVID are on the rise again. The American Academy of Pediatrics says this past week, there was a more than 6% increase in cases from the week before. And winter is coming. This is at its heart a winter virus, and I think that as we head into winter, we will likely see a bump in cases. That's the, the most likely scenario. I'm Britt Conway reporting. U.S. Department of Justice says that since 2016, Uber has been overcharging disabled people for taking too long to load into vehicles. So now the DOJ has filed a civil suit against Uber. The department says charging wait time fees for disabled passengers and potential passengers violates the Americans with Disabilities Act. DOJ cited a case of a quadriplegic woman who was charged for a wait time fee for taking 15 minutes to load into a vehicle and was denied a refund. An Uber spokesman says the company disagrees that its policies violate the violate rather the ADA. Uber says the company policy is to refund for wait time fees for disabled riders whenever they alert Uber they were charged. Four astronauts launched into outer space on a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule on top of a Falcon 9 rocket last night. The mission dubbed Crew 3 is sending the astronauts to spend six months aboard the International Space Station. While there, the crew will perform research and help maintain the laboratory. This is the most recent astronaut launch led by NASA and SpaceX. NASA retired its space shuttle program in 2011. That means SpaceX is the only option the U.S. has to make trips to the ISS. 538, about 67 degrees. Still ahead, we'll tell you about Arby's plans to release a vodka based on its famous curly fries. And next, how lawmakers are pressuring President Biden to do something about all those rising gas prices. 67 degrees at 538 this morning. Mike says the cool front is on its way. How much will things cool down? He'll explain when we come back. Welcome back to GMSA. U.S. inflation has hit a 30-year high as prices for everything, including gas, continues to rise. It comes as AAA expects more than 53 million people to travel for Thanksgiving this year. And those soaring gas prices have President Biden under pressure from his own party to do something. CNN's Jen Sullivan has a story. Tackling gas prices as the cost continues to tick up. Gasoline prices in the United States really reflect global market conditions. And today the oil market is pretty tight. Pressure is mounting on the White House to take action as a new AAA report anticipates 48 million people will hit the road this Thanksgiving. That's close to pre-pandemic numbers and despite gas prices hitting a seven year high. No matter how much gasoline prices are, people are still gonna take that trip. AAA blaming low supply and demand for the price hikes and saying oil producing nations are constraining supply to try to recoup pandemic losses. OPEC does not want to ramp up production too much in case there is a sudden economic downturn because COVID could still come back this winter. 
Meanwhile, a group of Senate Democrats are calling on President Biden to take action. In a letter, the 11 senators urging Biden to consider releasing barrels from the nation's emergency oil reserves, or even taking the more extreme step of banning oil exports. Some industry experts are skeptical, saying the impact may only be temporary. That could have, you know, maybe a short-term impact on on the oil market and on gasoline prices, but probably not much. They say the best course of action is to wait for supply to catch up to demand. And inventories could actually start to grow by the first quarter of next year. So it's really kind of just a matter of getting through maybe a tighter winter before some relief. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. Right now we're at 543 on your Veterans Day. Up next, we're checking in with the San Antonio Humane Society and with a pet that needs a new home today. Welcome to Good Morning San Antonio. I'm the pet up for adoption. Why not? Hey, got the dog in my arms. Kim's here from the San Antonio Humane Society, and I think this is the only sane one here. So who is this little guy? <laughs> this is Milo, and Milo is a, a chihuahua, a little bit of a terrier mix, um, about uh, 10 months old, so about six pounds-ish. Yeah. Um, definitely not going to get much bigger than that. I feel like that's pretty much what uh, Milo's going to be like. And for being just a 10 month old Chihuahua mix, I mean, he is very, very kind of calm. Not, yes, very, very well yeah. mannered. Um, or else calm. you're just afraid of me holding you with a microphone and being kind of weird. <laughs> you know, being put so. on TV this morning. No, he's great. We were had, had yeah. him out of the kennel this Hello. morning and he was just really calm. So. What y'all got going on? So we have a really new, uh, neat program that's launching called Shelter Helpers. And it's an extension of our Camp Humane and it's for grades six through 12. They can come out on Saturday, and not this Saturday, but Saturday the 20th of November, and be part of that really cool club. Parents can drop them off, it's from nine to two, and parents can go do their thing, and they get a behind the scenes tour, they get to make enrichment items, all kinds of great things. And for your KSAT viewers, we have a promo going on. Oh. So they just go on our website at sahumane.org and put in uh, KSAT, and they'll get $20 off their registration fee. Fantastic. And if you'd like more information about that, you can give them a jingle there. Here, do you want to do the, the close right there? Yes. For more information, head on over to the San Antonio Humane Society, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. Kim, Mike, thank you very much. Thank you, Milo. <laughs> Had to be the sweater. That was the inspiration. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. It was. Good morning, consumer headlines. Looks like the skyrocketing price of homes around the U.S. won't be going down anytime soon. According to the National Association of Realtors, the median price of existing single-family homes, homes rather, rose in the third quarter in nearly all the 183 markets they track. In 78% of those markets, prices went up by double digits. They're being pushed higher by strong demand from home buyers and low inventory still. There's one sign the market is slowing down a bit. Realtors Association says the median home price jumped nearly 23% in 2021 second quarter, but in the third, it only jumped 16%. And would you like vodka fries with that? Arby's is releasing two limited edition alcoholic drinks, Arby's Curly Fried Vodka and Arby's Crinkly, Crinkle Fry Vodka. Officials say both vodkas taste like their namesake fries. The Curly Fry Vodka includes cayenne, onion, and garlic, while the Crinkle Fry Vodka is produced with kosher salt and sugar. The 80 proof potato based liquor will make its debut on November 18th in a handful of sites, including California, Florida and West Virginia, but not in Texas for now. The price tag for a bottle, about $60. Boy, they're proud of that, aren't they? Yeah. Not the first potato paste liquor out there, but uh, wow, very pricey. Yeah, also cayenne, pepper, garlic, onion. Mm. Mm, mm. Oh no. Just maybe have lunch or dinner instead. Yeah. Right now, 549. Good morning, guys. I'm wondering if that's top shelf, right? With curly fries, vodka? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't sound too appetizing. Uh, but uh, we're taking a look here at 35 at Alamo, where we do have some flashing lights out there. Uh, not sure exactly what we're seeing. This has just popped up on the TransGuide camera. The Texan has not listed anything just yet, but it does look like we have some first responders out there, along with some towing trucks. So this, this could be a disabled vehicle or a crash, but we'll continue to watch this one pretty closely. Let's take a look right now. We did have a crash off Loop 410 right at Cherry Ridge in those eastbound lanes, but looks like that has cleared out from our map. 
map, so that's some good news there. But taking a jump, it's been a pretty busy morning. We do have this crash still out there of I-10 eastbound at Loop 410. We're seeing that build up in the northbound lanes, so watch out for that. Make sure you have your patience this morning, and make sure you're checking those vehicles. A stall just popped up here off I-35 northbound at Evans Road. A little further up, we still have that stretch of traffic that continues to build due to some construction in those northbound lanes right at FM 1103. Traffic moving at 23 miles per hour. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we had hoped Thursday would start off pretty nice, but looks like we're off to a busy start. We'll continue to give you all those updates there on 35 at Alamo, guys. Thank you for the update, Stephen. I need help okay. with this one. Okay. It says a looks like a bat. I don't I'm see not it. It's a little dark. It's a lot dark. <laughs> <laughs> I was being nice. Okay. Um, I see what looks like a silhouette, perhaps, center of the screen, kind of center top yes. left, just a little bit. It's yeah. almost like the Dark Knight Rises Part 4 or something. Uh, and and I'm see having it? to look at the monitor by the camera because it's really hard on that. <laughs> so that let me, so you don't okay, think I'm crazy. Okay. It's kind okay. of well, generally anyway, in this area. Oh, I was not seeing What's that area. No? I, I was seeing. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. We're all confused. If this is a Rorschach test, <laughs> <laughs> occupied us for 30 seconds. So right. You got us. <laughs> I know. And we got some clouds hanging around here right now. And the front is starting to work its way on through the area ahead of it. We've still got a lot of humidity and we do have some fog to deal with around Pleasanton. Quarter mile visibility right now. Some around Casterville as well. And then things uh, clear out quite nicely and you can see more fog with all the moisture down here to the southeast. So as that as that front pushes on in here, that's going to uh, continue to push that fog on out of here. As far as temperatures, 68 in town, 70 Stinson, but then we drop down 10 and 15 degrees heading off out there to the uh, northwest. The humidity also drops down. Look at that dew points down to 49 right now into comfort 20 degrees lower than what it is here so this cooler drier air will continue to filter on in here and as a matter of fact i mean you look at the change in dew point temperatures compared to this time yesterday five degrees higher here in town but then given the fact the front has moved through it's now 5, 10, 15 degrees lower out in portions of the hill country. So again, that will be that drier air is going to be continuing to come on in here. Big low up there right around the Dakotas, Prairie Provinces of Canada. This is what's helping push a front across the country. As a matter of fact, that front stretches from the Canadian border all the way down to uh, well, down to us, but we really didn't get anything out of it. A couple little sprinkles and more of it off to the east, but uh, it is going to be pulling in that drier air. This is going to stick around for the next couple of days, so we'll have a good looking weekend around here. We get sort of a reinforcing shot of cool, dry air coming in here uh, tomorrow night, late into Saturday. And so temperatures, highs are going to be the coolest, only probably upper 60s on Saturday. And again, these next couple of evenings, tonight, tomorrow, Saturday evening, going to cool down quickly once that sun thinks about going down. So make sure if you head out, you do take a jacket with you. And then we go into uh, Monday. There's a little bit of a maybe another front trying to squeeze through here. It's not really going to do too much of anything and we're going to be somewhat on the mild side. Another perhaps better chance of rain comes in here by about this time than next week, but that's still a little iffy as of right now. 70 at noon today, mostly sunny skies. Temperatures will drop down this morning, then come back up to 70 and then top off at 75. So in the neighborhood of a normal average high temperature today, kind of breezy as well. Wind out of the north to northeast about 10 to 20 miles per hour. Drier air cools down nice and quick tonight down to 48 tomorrow morning, 45 Saturday morning, highs in the 70s. Beautiful. And awesome. like I said, another front comes through late tomorrow night, just sort of reinforcing shot of the cool Still dry air. Looking very, very good. Yep. Especially good put your Christmas lights up. Mm -hmm. Not turn them on though yet. Just no. have just be ready. I'll do that Thanksgiving week. Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving. Okay. I know I'm pushing it. After Thanksgiving dinner. Okay. <laughs> 553, about 67 degrees. All right, taking a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, five, nine, two, fireball five, daily four, eight, nine, two, eight, fireball four. Cash 5, 7, 20, 24, 20, 7, 29. You have a lot of Texas numbers 6, 8, 36, 37, 44, 50, and Powerball 19, 25, 43, 46, 48. Powerball 14, Power Play 2. Don't forget about dropping off some sh new shoes at any SAPD substation for our Share the Shoes drive. We have teamed up with the SAPD once again to try to gather as many shoes as possible. 
for children in need. We're looking for shoes of all sizes, toddlers to teens. All donations will benefit the local nonprofit Good Samaritan Community Services next month. Just in time for the holidays, you can make donations through November 30th, and we'd love your help. Thank you very much. Still ahead on GMSA today, of course, Veterans Day. That means some offices around town will be closed. We'll let you know what you can expect there. A San Antonio man sent to the hospital after an explosion in his kitchen overnight. Katrina Weber will join us live and trans guide right now. Let's see how things are looking. Flashing lights 35 at Alamo. Stephen Cavazos is tracking this right now. And Mike is tracking a cool front moving through the KSAT 12 viewing area as we speak. Glad you're with us. We'll be right back. It's been anything but a quiet night here on the southwest side. An explosion in this apartment building sent a man to a hospital and his neighbors out into the street. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. Emotions running high and high rather in the Kyle Rittenhouse murder trial. The defense now requesting a mistrial. We'll have the very latest. Taking a look outside. Beautiful 67 degrees at 6 a.m. this morning. Mike says a cool front. It's on its way or rather already blowing in. How cool will things get cool down? <laughs> Let us know. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. That would be November 11th. Veterans Day. Thank you so much for all of our veterans and everything that you have done for us. We appreciate you. We salute you every day here in Military City USA, but especially today. Mike Ostrage is here with more on what could be a cooler couple of mornings on the yeah. horizon. Yeah, tomorrow going into the weekend, very, very chilly out there. Uh, the front's kind of coming through in a two-stage process. The wind has already shifted around, evidence that Planes are taking off to the northwest out there at the airport. And as far as visibility, Pleasanton has actually improved a little bit. It was down to about a quarter mile visibility. We had some fog still with all the moisture out ahead of that front as it continues to work its way through. So we're now at 67 degrees. We were at 68 last hour and 62 Balverde. Burning stage has now dropped down to 59. So cooler air continues to move on in here along with the drier air, obviously. So we still have a fair amount of humidity, but with that drier air coming on in here, that humidity obviously is going to be dropping down, and this is going to be over the course of the next couple of hours. Mold is on the low side, and uh, throughout the rest of today, we drop down going for 60 when the front moves on through here, and then we continue to rebound from there, so at about 10 by noon. Also, the wind is going to be picking up out of the north to northeast about 10 to 20 miles per hour, kind of on the breezy side today, but a beautiful day with that drier air, plenty of sunshine this afternoon, and we make it up to 75 degrees, and of course, with with this dry air, clear skies, yeah, it's going to cool off very quickly once the sun goes down tonight and the next couple of evenings. So if you're going to be out after the sun goes down, make sure you do keep a jacket with you. Closer look at the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything big going on on the road, sir? Yeah, right here at Transguide, Mike, we do have that crash off 35 at Alamo. We did just see that the exit to Nogalitos is closed at this time. This is in the upper levels right at Alamo Street. You can see those flashing lights there off in the distance. Make sure you're driving carefully through that area. We are starting to see that build up there along those southbound lanes of 35 at Alamo Street. Being that it's now 602, this is not looking good, especially with morning rush almost here. Let's take a look around town and see what you can expect for this Thursday morning commute. A jump over here does show that still crash is still present here off I-10 eastbound at Loop 410. We still see somewhat of a minor buildup, but it's not as big as we've been seeing throughout the morning. Looks like it's actually dissipating, but make sure you drive carefully through the area. Let's take you up to 35 because this is also a problem spot this morning. This stall still detected there off those northbound lanes at Evan Road and a little bit further up a construction still taking place off I-35 northbound at FM 1103 traffic moving but just at 20 miles per hour so make sure you pack that patience this morning Thursday morning has been off to a rather bumpy start uh, not really liking that uh, but it uh, there's still pro a lot of green on the screen so there's some good news there and if we take a look at these inbound times that's the same here it's still pleasant from Pleasanton with 28 minutes on 37 to the downtown San Antonio area coming in from from Lytle on 35. It's just 16 minutes at this hour and Highway 90. We're looking at 19 minutes from Castroville. Again, here's another look at 35 at Alamo Street. It does look like traffic is moving, so we'll continue to keep our eyes on the roadways. But as always, make sure your eyes on the are on the road as well. Mark. 
Stephen, thank you. Started with a spark, what then became an explosion and fire tore through one man's apartment on the southwest side. It left him with burns and in a hospital. Our Katrina Weber is outside that apartment building in the 1700 block of West Mayfield. That's not far from Southwest Military. Now, Katrina, you mentioned earlier that this has affected everyone in that building. Well, that's right. Uh, I saw some of the neighbors. In fact, they're still sitting outside. Uh, they told me they're waiting for help from the American Red Cross. They were told by CPS energy crews who were here up until just a few minutes ago that it's not safe for them inside that building uh, because of what was an explosion possibly related to gas. Let me give you a look at the video from last night. This happened a little bit after 11 o'clock last night. Firefighters told us that a man was in his apartment. He told them that he was cooking and lit a cigarette, then noticed the blue flame and felt that explosion. That man suffered burns, was taken to a hospital. Uh, the neighbor who I talked to says that she was in her own apartment, uh, smelled a strong smell of gas, and then was knocked clear across her room by that explosion. She says she rushed outside, saw her neighbor with burns, clothes hanging off him. Uh, he was also apologizing for what happened. He was rushed to the hospital again to be treated. We don't know an update on his condition, but again, those neighbors now outside of their homes trying to figure out what to do next. There's a huge hole in the back of this building where that explosion was. It blew that wall clear off the side of the building. So some repairs that need to be made here. And again, that investigation continues into exactly what happened this morning. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The confessions to carjackings continue to pile up for the Alamo Quarry Market shooting suspect. A new affidavit shows 18 year Julio Cesar Rivera and another man stole a truck at gunpoint near Goliad and I-37 back on October 9th. Rivera also told police he took a car from a woman at North Star Mall and took two other vehicles from a quick trip gas station on Rigsby. That crime spree happened October 9th through the 19th. Now to that dramatic turn at the Kyle Rittenhouse murder trial and a major question now lingering over the case. The defense has requested a mistrial. This comes after the accused killer took the stand in his own defense, breaking down in tears while describing the fatal shootings in Kenosha, Wisconsin, last year during protests over racial injustice. This morning, legal experts are weighing in on what could happen next. ABC's Andrew Dembert has all the details. Day eight of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial gets underway this morning after intense drama in court Wednesday. That's basic law. It's been basic law in this country for 40 years, 50 years. And Rittenhouse breaking down on the stand. The 18 year old is charged with shooting three people, killing two of them, Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber during protests in Kenosha, Wisconsin last year. Rittenhouse says he opened fire in self-defense. He says Rosenbaum threatened him before the shooting. She scream, if I catch any of alone, I'm going to kill you. Rittenhouse then choked up. Mr. Rosenbaum was now running from my right side um, and I was cornered from in front of me with Mr. Zeminski and there were <laughs> there were three people right there. The problem with a breakdown like that is if you're inclined to believe him, you feel sorry for him, and if you're inclined not to believe him, you think he's faking it. Prosecutors attempted to dismantle Rittenhouse's argument that he had traveled to Kenosha to protect businesses from looting. Why do you need the gun when you go out there? Um, I, I need the gun because if I had to protect myself because somebody attacked me. Why would you think anybody would do that? I don't know. Then the judge scolding the lead prosecutor for attempting to discuss a video of Rittenhouse from days before the shooting. Pardon me? That was before the Don't defense get brazen with me. Uh, uh, you knew very well, you know very well that an attorney can't go into these types of areas when the judge has already ruled. The defense is now seeking a mistrial with prejudice. If the judge approves that request, Rittenhouse cannot be retried for the crimes. Rittenhouse has pleaded not guilty to homicide and attempted homicide charges. We expect to hear from three more witnesses. Jury deliberations, meanwhile, are likely to begin next week. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York.
The U.S. and China have announced a surprise pledge to strengthen their cooperation addressing the climate crisis. The pledge comes ahead of a virtual meeting between the U.S. and Chinese presidents. Specific topics haven't been announced yet, but there's also an expectation the conversation will include China's military aggression against Taiwan, specifically its recent testing of hypersonic missiles and cyber attacks. The space race could also be on the table. Back here at home, San Antonio Independent School District is looking to hire more substitute teachers. The district holding a job fair next week, Monday, November 15th. It'll take place inside the cafeteria at Sam Houston High School. That's on East Sam Houston Street. It starts at 430 and wraps up at 7 o'clock that night. District hopes to find substitute teachers for Sam Houston High School and Davis Middle School during the in-person hiring event. And companies all around the city are offering discounts to veterans and active duty military. Yeah, Buffalo Wild Wings veterans get 10 free boneless wings and fries at IHOP. Veterans and active duty military receive their free red, white and blue pancakes from 7 a.m. through 7 p.m. And over at the San Antonio Zoo, members of the military, both past and current, get free admission all month long and can bring up to four family members at 50 percent off the standard admission price. So these are just a few of the many deals and discounts available. Available for veterans and active duty military. For a full list online right now, head over to ksat.com. 610, about 67 degrees. Well, still ahead on GMSA, a high scoring victory for the Spurs. Could it be a sign of things to come? We'll have a recap from last night's matchup against the Kings and a look ahead to, to their next matchup. Americans all over the country are feeling the effects of inflation from the gas pump to the grocery store. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington coming up when economists feel the country will bounce back. It's been mild, muggy and sometimes foggy over the last four or five days. But Mike says that's about to all change. Cooler mornings are ahead. How chilly? I'll tell you coming up. It's an issue affecting Americans all over the country. Prices are rising in almost every sector from gas to the grocery store. That's right. New numbers on inflation suggest the economy is seeing the biggest increase in prices in more than 30 years. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest on the economy. Good morning. President Biden speaking in Baltimore acknowledged the pain, pointing to the ongoing supply chain issues. Still, Americans are hurting. It's happening all over the country. Gas prices are outrageous. Americans alarmed at rising prices. Everything from the pump. I was on the New Jersey Turnpike and it was 414. So I decided, just for premium, so I decided to drive to Delaware, right? And in Delaware, I think it was uh, like 10 cents more. To the grocery store. Most of the prices for meat and vegetables have gone up. Inflation threatening to undercut America's economic recovery. The Labor Department releasing new numbers showing that consumer prices have surged 6.2% over the last year, the largest 12-month increase since 1990. Prices are increasing everywhere. Energy, food, even new cars are among the largest contributors. Economists say it's the direct result of the pandemic coupled with supply chain issues. President Biden at the Port of Baltimore touting his bipartisan infrastructure package Wednesday, also acknowledged Acknowledging the rising prices, assuring Americans it'll be addressed. We're tracking these issues and trying to figure out how to tackle them head on. The economist Larry Summers is calling on the Federal Reserve to take stronger action and also says the Biden administration should consider removing some tariffs affecting prices. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Well, Zillow is selling its way out of the home flipping business. The Wall Street Journal says it has agreed to sell 2,000 2000 home, 2000 homes to an investment firm Zillow announced last week it was shutting down the flipping part of its business because it couldn't accurately predict where the home prices were going and was losing too much money. People looking to trade in Apple devices won't be getting as much. Mac rumors first spotted the cuts in Apple's trading values. For example, someone trading in an iPhone 12 Pro Max gets about $700 now. It was close to $800 earlier this week iPhones, iPads, and Macs are all seeing trade-in price cuts. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos, Traffic Authority.
Good morning, Sarah Costa. Well, things are not looking better here off 35 at FM 42. If you're driving up to New Braunfels later, make sure that you have some patience because some construction crews are working to wrap up uh, some road work that they've been doing overnight. But it's obviously led to a delay of traffic that we're seeing here from this shot at Transguide. Looks like things are moving, but rather slowly. Let's first start here, though, off 281 northbound at Bulverde Road. Uh, we are seeing a crash that was detected there on our map. Uh, there are no Transguide cameras to show us exactly what's going on uh, here on 281, but make sure that you watch out if you drive through that area a little bit later this morning. Now let's take you down to that problem spot here off 35 where we just showed you that traffic is moving, but check this out eight miles per hour. So again, very slow this morning in those northbound lanes right at FM 1103. We'll continue to track that throughout the morning, but some good news here. That crash that we did show you a little bit earlier looks like it cleared off I-35 southbound at Alamo Street, so that's good. Just in time for morning rush. We're a few minutes away from that. Wider scope of the map does show for 617. It's pretty green on the screen. Taking one last look at this shot at Transguide 35 at FM 42. This is the problem spot this morning. We'll continue to keep our eyes on it throughout the morning as well. Mar Mike, let's check in with the weather. How's it looking? Not too bad. Fronts yeah. moving through as we speak. Of course, this being Veterans Day, it is also the anniversary of the end of World War I when the armistice was signed in the 11th hour, 11th day, 11th month. All right, temperatures are going to continue to drop down. We'll make it down to right around 60 here in town. It's already down in the 50s in parts of the hill country and behind that front. And then 75 later on this afternoon. Plenty of sunshine, breezy, lower humidity, fantastic fall weather. And oh, goodness gracious, talking about fantastic. Look at this picture. And there is Emmy Lou right there in the middle posing and a favorite time right there at sunset. Thank you so much for that picture. That's great looking. All right. Uh, you really can't see anything. I mean, this thing has not come through with a whole lot of fanfare. This front, uh, it is producing a couple of uh, showers right along as it moves on through here. Gonzalez and then more further off to the north and east and maybe uh, well, is that little speck of perhaps a shower or two crossing 90 right there just to the west of Honda. Like we were talking about, this was not going to be a big, big rain event by any stretch. All right, visibility has definitely improved Castroville as well as uh, down around Pleasanton where it was down to a quarter mile just about an hour ago, but still a lot of fog well down to the southeast. But as the front continues to push on through, obviously it's going to be uh, clearing that out as we get this drier air to move on in. So temperatures now have dropped down almost 10 degrees from the airport up toward Bernie stage 61 right now in Balverde and then also the dry air continues to come on in here. So we still have some humidity out there, but there you can see where the front has moved through Balverde, Bernie stage and then much, much drier heading out in toward the hill country. And again, that will continue to move on in and the dew points will remain very pleasant today, tomorrow. And then we get another reinforcing shot of the cooler, drier air coming in here tomorrow night into early Saturday. Then we rebound by the first of the week and get more humidity moving back on in. So we've got this big trough here, a low up around the Dakotas, southern Canada. This is what is really driving. There's a huge front which extends all the way pretty much from border to border. And that's what and we're on the tail end of it, obviously, and didn't get much as far as any rain, but that will continue to pull in that low and the combination of the high pressure is going to keep us in this northwesterly flow. Keeps great weather around here. We get the reinforcing shot then tomorrow night into Saturday and yeah, fantastic weekend. Cool mornings, nice afternoons. Get outside and enjoy it and then things start to kind of flatten out just a little bit going into next week. So it'll get somewhat milder as we go into next week and rain chances. Right now, the next decent rain chance, if that would, wouldn't be for at least about another week. So, you know, it's always nice to get some every once in a while. 70 today at noon, mostly sunny skies, breezy conditions, low humidity, really, really nice day. And it's going to cool off quickly, though, tonight. So if you're out this afternoon, yeah, you probably don't need a jacket up to 75 degrees. But yeah, once that sun thinks about going down, get ready. Temperatures will drop off quickly. Same thing tomorrow night. And then, of course, late, late tomorrow night, we get that next reinforcing shot of cooler and drier air. So only the upper 60s on Saturday, 75 again on Sunday. Great looking weekend again. Three in a row now. Three in a row. Mm -hmm. Very spoiled. Yep. Thank Thanks. you. Mike. Continue it. <laughs> Let's go 621 about 66 degrees. Well, new details and an alleged homecoming voting fraud in Florida. That's ahead. Your GMA first look. 
Why hide your skin if Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide our skin, not us. Because Dupixin targets a root cause of eczema, it helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of it. And for kids ages 6 and up, that means clearer skin and noticeably less itch. Hide my skin, not me. By helping to control eczema with Dupixin, you can change how their skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Hide my skin, not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can show more with less eczema. Talk to your child's eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. Can you try to describe what it feels like to go from being homecoming queen to not being able to trust really anyone like that? It was the crowning moment of homecoming weekend 2020. Emily Grover named homecoming queen of J.M. Tate High School in Cantonment, Florida. But months later, she and her mother, Laura Carroll, an assistant principal at a local elementary school, were arrested, accused of rigging votes to help secure the win. Now, for the first time since their arrest, the duo opening up about the charges against them, all of which the women deny. How are we at the point where you're facing felony charges? We don't know. And we'll have more of our exclusive interview coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. In sports, Spurs hosting the Kings at home last night. You could tell the Silver and Black were tired of losing. San Antonio had its highest scoring opening quarter of the season, leading Sacramento 34-20. DeJounte Murray had 26.6 assists, and the Spurs never trailed, raining a bunch of threes last night. They rolled right past the Kings, 136 to 117. Spurs had not won at home since that season opening victory, October 20th against Orlando. So next up, Silver and Black play host to the Dallas Mavericks, a rematch with the Mavs. Spurs try to redeem themselves after the last matchup with the Mavericks that ended with Dallas winning by one point. Tip off 730 at the AT&T Center. I used to live in Sacramento mm -hmm. and always had to, I always cheered against the Kings when the Spurs would play. So this, this win feels kind of good. Sarah, you did the right thing. I know, I know. <laughs> right now it's uh, 626, about 66 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a motorcycle crash on the city's northeast side leaves a woman dead this morning. We'll tell you what we know. And right now on the roads, heavy traffic, 35 at FM 482. We're checking back in with Stephen as we fit, wait for the sun to come up on your Veterans Day 2021. It was more than just a bump in the middle of the night. Neighbors say there was a boom, an explosion that rocked their building and sent a man to the hospital. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story coming up. This morning, we have the details on a deadly motorcycle crash on the city's northeast side overnight. That's just ahead. And outside with live cam, waiting for the sun to come up. It's working on it right now. Uh, Mike says a cool front has been moving through the area right during GMSA today. Good morning. It's Thursday, November 11th. It is Veterans Day. We salute all our veterans today. And thank you for joining us right now. We want to tell you about some closures today of note. East Central ISD, Judson ISD, SCUC ISD are all closed today. Other school districts are open today. The drive through vaccination clinic at the Alamo Dome is closed in observance of Veterans Day. Most banks and the post office are also closed. And libraries. We have a full list of places are closed and many that are open today posted for you on our website at ksat.com. Sarah, I think you'll agree it's been very mild this last, seems like four or five mornings. That's about to change. Yeah, it's been kind of muggy out there. And Ever since the weekend, because the weekend was fantastic. Yeah, the weekend was perfect. Are we going to have a repeat weekend? Yes. All right. Jump ahead to the end of the book there. Now, uh, as you can see, and it's already kind of moved on me a little bit, but there's a line, I think it's like now right behind that banner with the clouds that are working their way, clearing out from west over toward east. More clouds. Uh, I'm going to swing this around when I get into the uh, long weather there, but uh, 67. The dew point, all right, has now dropped down to 59 degrees. It was up to about 65 just 
what, 10, 10 minutes ago or something like that. Wind is out of the north now at 13 miles per hour. And the front as it moved on through as expected, well, a couple little uh, sprinkly showers here over by Gonzales. That's been about it. That's some clutter around the radar site off there to the uh, the west. And visibility, Catula still has some fog. Same thing with Victoria. Pleasanton was down to a quarter mile. It has now improved quite a bit. And temperature, 67 degrees. 59 Bernie stage and again the dew points have dropped down so get ready here at Port SA and Randolph as that dry air comes in here and that's going to be followed by the cooler air so I think we drop down to about 60 before we start the rebound later on today. Mold is on the low side and the updated count is going to be coming out in about uh, say 45 minutes to an hour or so so the front's moving on through the area right now wind shift dry air then the cooler air today sunny breezy less humid fantastic day great the next couple of days chilly start though i definitely need a coat the next couple of mornings then beautiful in the afternoons and that's going to extend into the weekend details coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority steven cavazos what's the latest sir hey good morning mike well things are looking pretty good for 6 30 at this hour loop 410 it's and pedro does show a few folks out there this morning 281 at hildebrand things are getting going there so there were a few issues out there this morning a few crashes that have quickly resolved but just a heads up if you're heading up to 281 maybe to bulverde later this morning a crash jill detected there in those northbound lanes again right at bulverde road we're seeing these north and southbound lanes still pretty green on the screen so that shouldn't pose too much of an issue at this hour but make sure you give those first responders plenty of room before you head out there taking a jump over to 35 this has really been the issue throughout the morning some construction that should have been wrapped up around 5 30 or so it is now an hour or so later uh, we still have that uh, delay of traffic that continues to build with cars just moving at seven miles per hour so as i always like to say pack that with your cup of coffee this morning. A wider look at the map does show thankfully it is still green and we are not seeing a lot of other big issues uh, in terms of congestion at this hour. And if you're traveling into the San Antonio area, almost green across the board. The usual spot there at Lavernia is 23 minutes, so a minor delay there, but you shouldn't find any problems if you're traveling in in just a moment. But it looks like the sun is peaking out there of Loop 1604 at Culebra. If it stays quiet, we'll get to some construction spots a little later morning, a late, little later on this morning, Mark. Big Stephen man's in the hospital with burns and his home is in shambles all from an explosion in his southwest side apartment building. It appears that natural gas and an open flame combined and caused all that damage. It happened in the 1700 block of West Mayfield. That's not far from Southwest Military. Our Katrina Weber is live there. Now Katrina, do firefighters suspect there was a gas leak? Well, it seems that that is one of the things that they're still investigating right now. We did know this uh, CPS energy crews here. They had been here most of the night making some sort of repairs. And according to neighbors, there was a strong odor of gas just before that explosion. Our video shows the after effects of it all. A huge hole where there had been a wall. It even knocked out the ceiling of that one apartment. Firefighters say they found very little fire when they got here shortly after 11 last night. And they say that's a sign that this did involve gas. The man who lived in that apartment told them he lit a cigarette while he was cooking, then saw a blue flame just before his home exploded. A neighbor next door says she also felt it. She told me one minute she was smelling gas, the next she was flying across her room from the explosion. She says she ran outside and then saw her neighbor with his skin and clothing burned. That man was rushed to a hospital Now we have not heard an update yet on his condition. The neighbors, meanwhile, are trying to figure out what they should do next. They say that they were told that it's not safe to go back into their apartments anymore because of the gas, and they were waiting for some sort of assistance from the American Red Cross. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Woman is dead for this morning following a motorcycle crash last night. It happened around 10 last night on the northeast side near O'Connor and Wurzbach Parkway. That's where SAPD says a woman on the motorcycle swerved to miss a vehicle that cut her off but wound up in front of a pickup. Pickup then hit the motorcycle, causing her to crash. When she tried to get up, she staggered into traffic and was struck by another vehicle and died at the scene. The driver who hit her drove away. So far, no arrests have been made. 
There's still lots of questions this morning about security and safety plans at the Astro World Music Festival. Houston's police chief saying more than double the amount of officers worked the event this year compared to 2019. But we still don't know how many private security guards were inside the event. A crowd surge during a Travis Scott performance is believed to have killed eight people. At least two concert goers are still in critical condition. The Houston police chief says organizers should have secured two mosh pits in front of the stage where Travis Scott performed. Meanwhile, Governor Greg Abbott says a task force will develop concert safety recommendations. A federal judge has ruled the governor Greg Abbott's ban on mass mandates in Texas schools violates federal law. The nonprofit advocacy group Disabled Rights Texas argued that Abbott's ban prohibited accommodations for disabled children, particularly those vulnerable to COVID-19. A U.S. district judge has prohibited Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton from suing school districts that require students to wear masks as a safety measure. This morning, vaccinations for kids 5 to 11 are ramping up. However, kids' COVID cases are going up too. CNN's Britt Conway has a story. All done. All done with his first COVID-19 vaccine. And he's not the only one. The White House estimates nearly a million kids 5 to 11 have gotten their first dose. With about 700,000 pharmacy appointments on the books, 114 children's hospitals and doctor's offices are offering vaccinations too. And there are mobile clinics in some places, along with school clinics. But getting more kids vaccinated is often a battle against hesitancy and sometimes equity. A recent poll shows parents with lower incomes are less likely to get their kids in that 5 to 11 age group vaccinated with concerns about getting time off work or finding a way to get to a vaccination site, along with educational disparities. Experts say more education generally comes with more acceptance of science. COVID-19 vaccines aren't the only vaccine doctors are worried about, though. The CDC says 22 million babies worldwide missed their vaccinations last year during the pandemic, worsening the global threat of measles. All the while, kids' cases of COVID are on the rise again. The American Academy of Pediatrics says this past week, there was a more than 6% increase in cases from the week before. And winter is coming. This is at its heart a winter virus, and I think that as we head into winter, we will likely see a bump in cases. That's the, the most likely scenario. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Well, today is Veterans Day, a time to honor those who have served, and our Jonathan Cotto is a veteran himself of the United States Navy. That's right. Jonathan was in the service from 2005 to 2013. 13. Yes. So that means about eight years in and about eight years removed from service. Jonathan tells us off camera that he was stationed in places like Norfolk, Virginia, Bahrain in the Persian Gulf and Point Magoo in California. He also told us great stories about serving aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt. That is a Nimitz class aircraft carrier that is legendary in the U.S. Navy. Jonathan, That's thank right. you so much for everything you've done for our country. Yeah, Jonathan spoke with a U.S. Air Force veteran who is now serving our country in a new way. Again, Jonathan, thank you for your service and thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you. I appreciate that. And it was truly my pleasure. Well, you know, uh, there's a lot to talk about and a lot of training has changed. Uh, the way service members train is starting to definitely change and improve and rightfully so. I was introduced to a woman who found a creative way to use what she learned during her time with the U.S. Air Force to incorporate an immersive training environment for members. This is Krista Watry, a United States Air Force veteran who enlisted back in 1998. She was accepted to the Air Force Academy and graduated top of her mechanical engineering class and got a full ride to MIT. And then went off to Space Command, where I was the chief engineer for our ultra-secure communication satellites that we have in GEO. After some time in Space Command, Watry says the Air Force was downsizing. So um, got out and then started my journey on the civilian side, innovating um, and building cool stuff. Cool stuff that would keep her in service to her country. Watry used her knowledge and skills and created Dynepic a secure digital infrastructure company that conducts an immersive training environment for her former employer, the United States Air Force. And that has just been a, a dream because we are now an Air Force requirement to deliver their future training. Despite her success, Watry says like for so many others, the transition from the military to civilian life was a difficult one, leaving structure and stability to running a veteran 
and woman-owned business. She adds, where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, so follow your passion. That's number one. You always got to do what you, you know, really are passionate about. She says oftentimes the challenge for veterans is selling their invaluable skills to civilian employers and says companies can't go wrong with hiring a vet. And they can just make things happen for your company that very few other people can do. So even if a military member doesn't seem like a perfect fit for a position, give them a chance because they'll always prove that they, that they have the skills to figure it out. Truly inspiring words and evidence that hard work truly pays off. For more on this story, you can head on over to KSAT.com. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Jonathan. Right now, 642, about 66 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll tell you about the chances of getting diagnosed with lung cancer and the early warning signs. Exactly quarter to seven, lung cancer takes more lives in the U.S. than colorectal, breast, and prostate cancers combined. Still, many have questions about the diagnosis. Do you have to be a smoker to get it? Are you more likely to get it as a man or woman? The answer may surprise you. Breathe in, breathe out. We all do it every day, all day long, but could lung cancer rob you of your breath? Most patients present with the most advanced disease because by the time they develop symptoms, it's usually a stage four. New coughs that don't go away, shortness of breath, chest or bone pain and headaches are all early warning signs. Gender also plays a role. The American Cancer Society reports that one in every 15 males will develop lung cancer, while for a woman, the risk is about one in 17. And black men are about 15% more likely to develop lung cancer than white men. And just because you don't do this doesn't mean you won't get it. Mostly related to smoking, but we also see unknown smokers on the rise as well. Exposure to secondhand smoke, previous radiation therapy, exposure to radon, asbestos, and other carcinogens such as arsenic, chromium, and nickel. And having a family history of lung cancer can increase your chances. So the best way to help lower your risk? Please come and get screened. Only 22%. Good morning, everyone. Time now is 647. Let's take a look around town. 37 at Houston. Looks like traffic is moving through that area. If we can take a closer look here from this shot at Trans Guide, we have a few folks out there this morning getting their day started, and it looks like the sun is out at 1604 at Culebra. Let's take you straight to the map. We do have a crash off 281 northbound at Pulverde Road. We've been tracking that throughout the morning, but it doesn't appear it's causing any issues in that area. Just watch out for those first responders. We do have a stall also there off I-10 westbound at Wurzbach Parkway, not causing any issues, but the big problem that that we've really been seeing throughout the morning. This is construction off I-35 northbound at FM 1103. Looks like crews are wrapping up there and traffic was really stop and go for quite a while, but looks like it is moving and picking up at 41 miles per hour. Wider scope of the map does show lots of green on the screen and we are not mad about it, especially when morning rush is here. Looks like a beautiful day outside. Let's head over to Mike and see what we can expect. Yeah, the front is moving through uh, as of right now. More on that in a second, but uh, here's some folks probably don't like the season too well. Yep, better hightail it. <laughs> I don't get it, Mike. <laughs> of course not. All right, there's the, <laughs> there's the, uh, the clouds that continue to work their way off to the east, and we have some clearing back on out to the, uh, the west as the front moves on through. And there are a couple of, uh, as expected, a few little sprinkly showers that have popped up right along that front mainly off to the east. There could be one or two of them perhaps there on the south side. Uh, if there's a little speck here, rain as the front moves on through, don't be uh, surprised by that. 67 here in town, 60 Balverde, and then 50s out in the hill country. And I don't think we will, <clears throat> excuse me, I do think we will drop down a couple of more degrees as that cooler air works on in here. The drier air obviously has moved on in. 59 is a dew point. We were up to about 65, but still it has yet to move through, say, Castro, Port S.A. and Randolph, but that will continue to move on in as we get the winds that are shifting around out of the north. 13 mile per hour winds, and they were a little bit gusty, gusting up to about 20 miles per hour there for a moment, and it is going to be on the breezy side today. So here's satellite and radar loop, and again, maybe a couple little sprinkles in uh, south and southeastern Bear County. You can see some of these lower clouds here, this darker shade of gray, and then it does come 
come to an end and it's working its way down to the uh, south and to the southeast. And this is sort of the tail end of this big, big cold front, which is working its way through the country. And it's pulling in much drier air. And we're going to get a reinforcing shot of dry air then tomorrow night into early Saturday. Also slightly cooler. So temperatures are only going to be staying in the upper 60s on Saturday, but then the humidity is going to come right back in here as we go into the first part of next week. And again, here's that big front cutting through the country and some really cold air in behind and that will continue to work its way off to the east and we'll have nice, pleasant fall weather around here for the next couple of days. Cold mornings, beautiful afternoons. Love it. 70 mostly sunny skies today at noon, breezy conditions and much drier air. Just a great day. Open up the windows this afternoon, but Make sure you shut them tonight because it's going to get down into the upper 40s here in town. So we're looking at low 40s, 30s in the hill country. Same thing by Saturday morning and 68 on Saturday with that little reinforcing shot of uh, cooler, drier air. Mid 70s on Sunday. Great looking weekend. That's going to surprise some people. I mean, I know you started talking about it this morning, but they're going to be like, did Mike say? But, but still, it's it like, was going to be out here. that <laughs> chilly. Yeah, it's yeah. a refreshing surprise. It is. It is. Cool and Thank you, Mike. Just be advised. We're trying to help you out. 650, about 66 degrees. Have you ever seen one of these at your local park and wondered what it was? Well, it's a disc golf basket and they've been getting a lot of use locally and across the country. I'm Sarah Costa coming up tomorrow on GMSA, the hype behind disc golf. Want to talk about a quick change artist. I'm very quick. <laughs> <laughs> Outside right now, the sun is coming up on your Veterans Day. We'll be right back. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Good morning. Coming up here on a Thursday edition of GMA, the explosive day in court at the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. The accused killer taking the stand in his own defense. Also this morning and only on GMA, you'll see the one person who was shot by him and survived joining us for his first interview since testifying. You'll see that and so much more right here on Good Morning America. You may have got the alert on your phones. Breaking news, an Amber Alert issued for a missing child. Austin police looking for three-year-old Mackenzie Byrne. She has brown hair, brown eyes, last seen wearing a gray shirt, pink and purple pants. The suspect is driving a silver 2012 Toyota Tundra with this license plate on your screen right now, BP70978. If you have any information, you are urged to call the number also on your screen. That's Austin Police 737-228. 9357. Let's go straight to traffic and an update with Stephen. Thank you, Mark. Sarah, let's take a quick look here as the shot at I-35 at FM 482. We had a big delay out in this area for quite a while, but looks like things are quickly improving. Let's go ahead and take, take you to the map. Uh, we did have a crash that also cleared here off US-281 northbound at Bulverde, but still see a minor slowdown. A stall there off I-10 westbound at Wurzbach Road, and that stall, the slowdown that we've been talking about right there at I-35 northbound at FM 1103. So we'll continue to track these problems throughout the morning. Let's check in with Mike. Ready for that beautiful weather. Yeah, and it's it's already starting to move on in here. We're looking off to the east right now. There's the leftover clouds off to the east, but it is clearing out to the uh, the west and we're now down to 65 degrees in town. So a little cooler air, 50s hill country and much drier air will move in. So folks, Castorville over toward Randolph, you're going to be enjoying this drier air uh, in the next uh, probably half hour, 45 minutes. Wind gusts, we were gusting up to about 20 here in town and it's going to be breezy throughout the day. 75 for high temperature and beautiful weather all the way through the weekend. And again, to U.S. military veterans everywhere, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your service to our country. We appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9. Good Morning America is next.